So today I'm going to show you how to make plaster castings of plants. So this is one example of the things we can make today. And the idea is to use plants, leaves, flowers that you uh, find anywhere and then press them into clay to create this mold, temporary mold, in which we can cast plaster. And then you get this beautiful uh, relief coming from the plant itself. You don't have to uh, invent anything uh, beautiful like this. Nature does it for you, so you can just use all the details of a plant to create um, these little um, keepsakes. And I'll show you how to uh, make them yourself at home. So to get started, we're going to use uh, clay and you want uh, soft clay. It doesn't really matter what type because we won't be uh, actually baking it. So uh, you can also reuse it afterwards for other things. You want it to be quite soft and you want to make sure the texture is pretty fine. So you don't want clay that has a lot of um, little pieces of, it's called chamotte, little pieces of hard clay inside to give it uh, stability. But in your case, you want it as smooth as possible. So uh, first I try to make it as flat as possible by hand and using a rolling pin you can try to make it a nice even slab um, so that we can cast all of our flowers in it um, what helps is to use some kind of plank of wood or a um, piece of textile underneath so using textile or uh, unvarnished wood will make it really easy for the clay to release so it doesn't stick if you use something too smooth like if i were to use the marble of the table it would stick really badly to it and then it would make your life really difficult uh, so think of what kind of surface you want to use underneath so in this case i try to roll it nice and smooth as flat as i can the thickness doesn't really matter you want it a bit thicker than the type of plants you're going to use so if you want to do really deep relief then you want clay to be at least as thick as that so i roll it out into a nice even slab. It doesn't have to be specifically straight or uh, even. You just want it to be nice and smooth. If you're using clay that you've used before, sometimes you get like here little uh, air bubbles. I just smooth them a bit with my finger. Eventually we're going to press um, flowers into it so you will grab the attention of the details, not those kind of little uh, imperfections. Um, so I smooth it out as much as I can. Last bit of rolling. Of course you want to make sure your rolling pin is nice and clean. If you have little pieces of clay like this, it's going to leave marks all over your uh, surface. And it has to be a wooden rolling pin. If you use plastic, it's also going to stick a lot. So you can use a dowel or maybe the handle of a broom or something if you don't have a rolling pin. So this is good enough and then you have to think of a mold so we have to keep a boundary around your plaster piece and um, to contain the wet plaster while it's casting so you can use different types of things it depends a little bit on the side that you want something that works really well is a spring uh, form so the hinge makes it really easy to release and um, of course the size is limited to what you have i can also use um, these little cookie cutter forms or if you want to go really small, you could use a cut up uh, paper roll or um, the rim of a little plastic cup. So these are standard little drinking plastic cups and I've cut them in half and we're going to use this part with the rim facing down uh, to contain the plaster. This part we'll use for something else. This is the same. This is the rim of a plastic takeout container that I've cut out and then uh, we can cast inside of it. Um, so we are gonna try to think of the composition that we want. So if I take one of those, for instance, and I press it lightly down, I'll see where the edge ends up. So I have a slight round trace, um, and that's gonna help me to decide what to do with my composition, how to put my flowers down to get a beautiful uh, harmonious result. Um, now, talking about the flowers or the leaves that you want to use, it's a little bit the same as our cyanotype tutorial. You have to think of leaves and flowers that are interesting in terms of shape and texture. The color doesn't really matter, so look for uh, intriguing leaves or uh, beautiful textures, beautiful um, thicknesses, beautiful nerves of the petals. 
uh, interesting geometric shapes but the color doesn't really matter. Of course you want something that's not too big so it's interesting even on a small scale unless you want to work really big but if you are just starting out I would keep it small it's actually easier. This one is a bit of an olive branch with the olives already hanging onto it. Um, so right now it's November, it's the end of November. There's not a lot of different flowers outside, but um, I still managed to uh, find a few different things that I want to try. And this one is a bit of a sage branch. So the front is not so interesting, but the back has a really beautiful texture. And this sage leaf is what I used in our uh, first example. So this beautiful texture is what you get here as well. So think a little bit in terms of uh, yeah, volume, um, in terms of composition. Um, I also have these little um, narcissus, they're mini ones. I think they're gonna work real good for this purpose. So I'll grab one of those. And you want to think how it's gonna fit in the shape of the mold, like how it will uh, be arranged. And you can cheat a little bit, you can, you know, arrange your flower to give a bit more interesting detail. So here I'll put this one aside so we can see the two different buds. Maybe I'll help it unfold a little bit. And sometimes you can reuse the flower, sometimes not. So be prepared to sacrifice your flowers and only be able to do one casting uh, per flower. So I noticed I just made a mess of tiny pieces of clay that were stuck on my cups. I'll just smooth it out last time before I get started. So I'll use the narcissus and I'll place it sort of in a way that makes sense with the boundaries of my circle that I plant. And then we're gonna uh, flatten it. So you have to sort of help it and think about the way the imprint is going to look like after the rolling pin has gone on top of it. So you can, you know, mo manipulate nature a little bit so that it goes in the direction that you want it to. So here I'll lightly push the flower down with my finger into the clay so it doesn't move so much when I come with my rolling pin. And now I'll just flatten the whole thing so that the flower is embedded into the clay and doesn't stick out above the surface. So you want to be a bit controlled and gentle. And then hopefully you can see on camera, um, the clay is level with the top of the, of the flower and now you have to delicately remove it. Uh, you can try by hand first, and if that's difficult, you can also use maybe tweezers or a pin to grab them. Um, you want to make sure you don't make marks with your fingers or with your tools into the clay besides the plant themselves. So the plants get the showcase. You don't want to make other marks. I'll start with a stem, delicately picking it out. And sometimes it comes easily in one go and you can reuse the whole thing and sometimes it's just too delicate and then you only have one try. So this is actually pretty easy. You can also use a little paintbrush to pick it out. <laughs> Blow it out. So now I have the beautiful imprint of my mini daffodils into the clay and I'm gonna use the rim of my plastic cup, this one push around it. So here I can still, you know, play a little bit with the placement. If I'm happy, I'll just push it down into the clay and you want a really good bond with the clay because soon enough we're going to pour the plastic, the plaster into the mold and then you need to tap it out so that the air bubbles also get released and in the tapping the mold can get loose and then you don't want to have a mess of plaster all over your shoes. So I push it down really well. I can also use a tiny bit of clay from the edge here to create a sort of uh, edge, a seam, to put it on top. I'm doing it especially on this side where the stem was sticking out of my mold. Otherwise, that's a perfect channel for the liquid plaster to escape from. 
Um, so that's if I want to make a flower that's or a, a plaster relief that's all one color. So if I pour my uh, plaster in here, I'm only going to get one color result. If I want to have a little more contrast like this, it looks a bit like those old fashioned camés, a type of jewelry that you had uh, carved out of two colors, always pink with white. Um, in this case, I use two different uh, plaster layers. So the first one is painted with just pure white plaster. And the second one I poured in pink is uh, white plaster mixed with a little bit of uh, pigment into it. So that's really like two separate layers and then they stick to each other. Plaster always sticks to plaster. So if I want to do something like this, I'm going to have to paint those little details in by hand with a paintbrush and really dilute plaster. So I'll show you how to do that. Uh, so for the one with the plaster uh, contrast color, I'll use a different flower. Let's think what I want. Maybe I want to try the big olive branch. This is going to be the size that I have. I need to roll it out a little bit bigger or I can use a smaller mold. That's also possible. Yeah, this would fit. So here I have the space for my olive branch. I press it down lightly so I know a little bit the boundaries of my mold and I can arrange my uh, composition better. So here again you have to think which one, which side is the good side, which one is going to give you more uh, details. It's not always um, important to have it facing you. Sometimes the back side of the leaves is more interesting. In this case I also have the olives that I want to get a good imprint from. So I'll see how to place it but I think the back side in this case is going to be more interesting. And here again I have to sort of direct the leaves in a way that are going to be pleasant for the look of the whole thing. You can't um, overlap thick leaves like this too well because they don't leave a nice imprint underneath. So you have to think maybe sacrifice some of the leaves actually so that you get a, a clearer, neater imprint. And I'll also Make sure to spread the olive the fruit themselves. So these, oh, they're a bit mushy. So I'll push these first down and I'll see how deep they can go into the clay because the layer of clay is not that thick. So I'll first spread it out by hand, decide where all my leaves are going to go. And then I'll go over it with a rolling pin. This one can go here. So it's fine to have overlapping leaves, but I find it works best if they're a little bit like thinner leaves. These ones are really stiff, really tough. And the olives themselves are a little bit too mushy. I think when I'm going to go over them with a rolling pin, they'll just fall apart. So let's see. And then these leaves they're going to be a little bit in the way. So let's see if I can push them here, maybe. And this one I think I'll sacrifice. This one also. So you can still, you know, control a little bit the details by what you leave and what you remove. I'll remove this one. All right, that seems pretty good. Now, moment of truth. Let's see what happens with the rolling pin and the olives when I go over them. Now in this case, it would be nice to have an even smaller rolling pin, actually. The first olive, the mini one, went well. Now let's see what happens to these. I can see there's some juice on my rolling pin from a burst olive. Let's try to clean it up. Big olives are a little bit hard to handle. I'll just push 
done with my finger but there we go olive oil all over my fingers so maybe I'll sacrifice this leaf as well and I'll smooth this part back down and you don't have to get it right the first time if it really doesn't do anything that you like you can of course pull it out roll out the clay again and give it another try it's not nothing final missing a little bit of volume here in the middle part of the stem. Let's see if I can do it with an alternative roller tool with my knife. And there's a bit of olive juice in the clay, but I don't think that's gonna matter so much. All right, so now let's see what happens when I peel it back out. I might just mop up that uh, olive juice a tiny bit. Just to make it easier to paint my first layer of plaster on it. All right, it looks pretty good. Here I have a little bit of a clay lift off. I'll just push that down with my paintbrush to make it a bit neater. So this little piece of clay, I'll just tap it back down. All right, so this I'll also smooth out a bit. And so in this case, I want to have a really uh, high contrast between the color of the background and the color of the olive. So I'll check again with my mold side. This will be the outline of the finished piece. And so here I'll paint the inside of those little um, lower elements where all the leaves were with a really small paintbrush and really dilute a plaster of Paris. So we'll also use Plaster of Paris to cast the whole um, piece, uh, but in a different color. So here I'll use a really small paintbrush and very diluted uh, plaster. So a little bit of water with a tiny bit of powder and then paint in the details. So I'll use my little plastic containers, just a tiny drop of water in it. That was too much of a drop. I'll pour it back. So you really need barely anything and same a little bit of plaster. So note on safety when you work with uh, powdered plaster or powdered pigments, um, it's a good idea to wear a dust mask. So not a face mask, Corona style, but a dust mask that actually stops dust particle. So something like these, you know, construction uh, masks. Um, so using a mask will uh, prevent you getting uh, all these particles in your lungs, which you don't want. So before you start mixing the plaster, wear your mask. When you work with pigments, wear your mask. Um, so I'll start getting a little bit of the plaster into my water. So now I have just a bit of water here. And this will be enough, I think, for now. Um, so with my paintbrush, I'll just dilute, mix it really well. And so this really liquid mix i'll just carefully paint it in the spots where i want the white to show and you can sort of push it along it's because it's so liquid it's going to want to fill all the little spaces that have a natural boundary from the leaves so it actually isn't that hard to keep it between the lines uh, of course the smaller the elements you choose in terms of uh, flowers or leaves the more difficult it is. So if you have really tiny stems, it's probably going to be really hard to fill in those tiny stems 
with your layer of white. So you can also just leave them without the white or make your life easy and choose something a little bit sturdier with a bit thicker leaves. So I'll try to move my camera in so that you can see more details of what happens when I fill it in. So I just tap it in and I don't want to leave marks into the fresh clay with my pen brush. It's really just super delicate, touch it and then the plaster water just fuses on its own. And I start with the leaves or the parts that are higher up the surface. And then I'll go in and uh, fill in the deeper parts. And your plaster water is going to start thickening on its own. That's the chemistry of the plaster of Paris for you. And um, so if you're taking your time and you see that the plaster is getting really too thick and not flowy anymore, that's fine. You just mix a new batch and that's going to make it much easier to fill in all your details. So if it's not flowing, if it's not really lo lo liquid, just mix yourself a new batch. So here I have almost all the leaves and this is maybe going to be outside of my mold area but just, I just do it anyways. We'll see where I cut it off. This leaf. And now I want to fill in the big stem and I actually start on this side which is going to be just outside of my mold area actually. But it's perfect because then I can just push that extra liquid in. I could even tilt my plank so that it just, you know, gravity feeds it down. Um, so that I can get a really neat stem without making too much of a mess. Which we are, it would be really easy to go out of the boundaries if I'm not careful. But if I focus on the parts that are at the intersection of br uh, branches, I have a little bit more space to get into the cracks. Here it's the same, I'm hoping the plaster will follow the space available. And I don't ever try to get it perfect, that's just not how I work. Um, I just let it flow where it will flow. All right, so this looks good. Actually, maybe I'm gonna do this one as well. That will be too bad to keep it on one color. So I'll remove my mold a little bit so I have better access. I have to be a bit gentle, or maybe I won't. So let's keep it like this and then I'll just fill it in from the top. So here again, I'm gonna fill in just the lower details. And it's really hard to see all the edges and boundaries for this petal, so I also won't bother to try. I just let the water, the plaster water flow where it will flow and then get a sort of gradient effect on the edges. So I don't need like a really precise hard edge between the white and the, or the painted and not painted. We'll just see what it looks like. So I'll keep on filling this in. All right, looks pretty good to me. Um, so now comes the part where we mix, mix in the plaster to go around it. So I'll just push this mold down because I started removing it. Make sure it's nice and deep. I'll use this one also to push it nice and deep into the clay. If you have a little edge like this, it might help to push on the edge of your plastic with a knife. And then you can really get it to stick and to go deep inside of the clay. So 
I push it all around, make sure I have a good bond and the plaster is not going to escape. And this one is quite shallow. Ideally, I would have a bit of a thicker edge. The bigger your piece, the thicker you want the plaster to be. And to secure it, I'll just cut a piece of my clay here and roll a long sausage. And then I'll use that as a special extra boundary on the edge to make sure my plaster won't escape. So I'll do it on this side as well. And of course this plastic mold, you can reuse them many times. So the plaster, once it's cured, once it's hard, you remove it from the mold, then you can do a new one. So in one session like this, I'll try different uh, flowers, different leaves, and I'll cast them one after the other. And you can reuse the clay as well. So as soon as the plaster is hard enough, you can peel off the clay and reuse it. So that looks pretty good. And so the idea after you've poured your clay is to shake the mold. So uh, you want to make sure that it's sturdy enough that when you shake the plank, nothing is going to fall out. I've peeled off the elements. I'll fill it in with white plaster also. Um, so the little white plaster that I had in my cup is not too hard. So as, I don't know if you can see, but it's too thick. Uh, so I'll make a new batch. Very important when you work with plaster, you never ever rinse it down your drain. So of course, if it's gonna thicken like this on its own, it's also gonna do the same inside your pipes. So you really want to make sure that the plaster never goes into the drain when it's liquid. And so if you want to dispose of plaster, you first let it harden in your container, in the, I don't know, newspaper or something um, that will catch the liquid and then throw away the hard pieces, but you never rinse down uh, hard plaster. What you can do is create a bucket where you rinse down all of your liquid plaster, but you catch the plastery water that's coming out. And then you let it settle down into the bucket so that it gets um, collected at the bottom. Then you drain off the clean water on top and whatever sludge you have left at the bottom of your bucket, you throw away in the garbage. It's the same with cement. Other hardening substances, you don't want them into your pipes. Otherwise, it becomes a really expensive hobby. I find this is still a bit too light, so I'll add a bit more plaster into this. I don't really have a recipe for this. It's really by eye and by feel. If I think that it's not leaving a thick enough layer of plaster behind, I just add a bit more powder to my water. is better. You want a visibly white uh, layer. Ooh, I made a mess. And if you make them really small, maybe with the uh, um, toilet paper tubes, I think they could make really cute Christmas ornaments. Just have to make sure you think of making a hole into the plaster before it's too hard. Otherwise you'll have to really drill it out with a drill bit, which is also possible. But if you do it while the plaster is still wet, it's uh, actually faster and easier. So this one. Right. Uh, if you use a metal mold like this, it might be a good idea to uh, use some kind of release agent, so like Vaseline or something greasy on the inside, to make sure your plaster is not going to stick. The 
this looks good and I'm going to mix liquid plaster enough to pour all three. I think I'm going to go for green. Um, so plaster of Paris, there's different brands, different uh, types, different suppliers. Uh, always follow the instruction coming with the bag of plaster that you actually buy. It doesn't keep so long, so if you've had it for years, then you probably need a new one. Um, I think it, you can keep it for about a year, make sure it's out of moisture. And then um, uh, follow the instruction of the manufacturer on how much to mix it. Uh, this one is about one volume water for two volumes of uh, plaster. And I also add a little bit of powdered pigment in to get my mix. I also put gloves on before I work with plaster in addition to my mask because it's really drying for your hands. So gloves. And I've done it many, many times, so I do it by eye, but if you're not familiar with plaster, just do it according to the manufacturer instructions. And it's also a bit of a guessing game as to how much uh, plaster you actually have to make. Uh, depending on how much volume you want to fill. Um, if you make too much, again, don't dump the extra into your drain, dump it into um, something like a newspaper or a bucket that you'll uh, let sink down before you work out. I do my powdered pigment in the water, and again, I do it a bit by eye. Um, when the plaster is wet, it will look darker than when it's dry, so be a bit more generous than you think. And then I'll add my uh, plaster. So here I'm actually measuring it for you. So I had one of these little cups full of water and I need in total two of the cups full of plaster. So that's kind of the first one. And then you want to sprinkle it into your water. So you want to sprinkle your plaster evenly on the surface and that's why you wear a mask because it gets everywhere in the air and into your lungs. So that's the first one spread out. And the more plaster you do per amount of water, the thicker the mix will be. You want it a bit goopy, not too liquid, but if it's too hard, too thick, it won't spread out nicely and you'll have more uh, bubbles problems. So again, here I spread out my plaster evenly on the surface of the water. And then you want to let it sit. You want to let the water absorb into all of your powders. So you don't want like dried, dry powder, dry plaster sitting on top of the water. So I don't know if you see anything, but here we have like a little thicker layer of dried powder on top. We're going to let that sit for a couple of minutes before um, swirling it around. So you want the powder to be completely saturated. You can see it changing color. It's a bit more gray when it's wet. So you want to wait until it's completely saturated before you stir it. Uh, so when my plaster is nice and saturated, I'll just swirl it. And that's when the gloves are also handy. So you just swirl it by hand and then you can really feel if there's any uh, part that are more liquid, more um, needing of a stir or if you still have lumps or anything like that. So you want to really get a good feel by hand and get an even mix with even texture. And at the same time, you can uh, mix your pigment in really well. If you want more of a marble look with your pigment, then you can better add it afterwards. So you can first mix your plaster and then when it's nice and even, you, you sprinkle a bit of your um, pigment on top and you don't mix it super well, that's going to give you uh, marbly swirls, which could be nice. Sometimes I find it a bit distracting for the beautiful details of the um, flowers themselves, a bit of a competition. So um, for this time, I'm going to leave it plain green. So once your mix is nice and even, you're going to pour it into your mold. I'll start with a big one here because I'm not sure exactly how much plaster I have, if I have enough for all three molds. If not, I may do a different color for the last one. All right, let's see. Mm. 
And it's up to you how thick you pour them. Uh, if you make them really thin, they're going to be really fragile. So if it's a look preference, that's fine. But just be really careful when handling them, especially if they're still uh, wet. So just fresh plaster uh, because it's going to be much easier to break. So now I have plaster on my hand, plaster in my bucket or my mold. Uh, I'm going to swirl a bit of water in it and sort of clean down the edges of the mold or the plastic and let that water settle. So again, don't pour this down your drains. Let it settle. You'll see that it's going to become a hard layer at the bottom eventually or a sludge layer and the water on top will be clean. So this you just let it be until you're done with your work and it will be much easier to dispose of. And with plaster you want to clean up first. That's always the priority uh, before you do anything else. So, so now you see the surface is not super even, but that's fine because we're going to tap it down to uh, set, settle the plaster layer. So I just grab the edge of my plank and I tap it down. And you see the plaster spreads on its own. And you also notice, hopefully, little air bubbles coming to the surface. And here it's coming out of my mold a little bit. That's fine, because that's going to clean up really easy. So this is good. I'll let it harden. In the meantime, I'll pour a little bit of uh, different color plaster for the strawberry. I think I'm going to go for pink and um, we'll wait for it to cure, to harden. It takes about half an hour, I think. And then we'll show you the unmolding. And now we wait. All right, so the plaster has hardened. It also feels warm to the touch. So plaster is a chemical reaction when it cures. It gets really warm and then it starts to cool down. From the moment that it starts to cool down, I normally release it. Um, so to remove your work, the easiest is to uh, separate the different design that you have or you just create a separate uh, part. Flip it over and gently peel off the clay. First, I'll remove, and this clay you can reuse, eh? you can uh, just uh, roll it up in a bowl and use it again. And then, with your finger, just go on the edge, dig in a little bit, and here I've got the edge of my clay. And you see, it just releases super easily from the plaster. And so you can see there's a tiny bit of white detail from the paintbrush layer on the pink background. This is still quite wet, so I'll let it dry out a little bit before I push it from the mold um, because the plaster when it's wet is still a bit more fragile. Uh, it would be a shame to ruin it for now. And this is the plastic mold. And again, it's coming loose really easily because of the unvarnished wood. You can achieve the same result with a piece of textile underneath. So here again, I peel off the layer. And you can see the details. And there's a tiny bit of clay left over on the edge. We can wait for the plastic to cure completely and then rinse that off. And here the edge of the plaster the mold is a bit angled so it will make it really easy to pop it out and um, this one even if it's uh, still not completely cured I can gently pop it out of the mold and then the final uh, step to make it really gift worthy will be to clean up the edges um, refine them a little bit I can do it with uh, wet sandpaper so sandpaper meant for cars that kind of things um, fine grit works really well with plaster Again, you want to work on wet plaster, so underwater, in a sink or something, to catch all the dust. Um, and then you can refine the texture of the back, sand it flat on the sandpaper like this, and then the edges a little bit to make them uh, neater. But it give it really nice detail. And the final one, the big one. So the bigger it is, the more careful you want to be with uh, flipping it over and handling it in general. Um, especially if you 
don't have a really thick uh, layer of uh, plaster. So the thinner it is uh, and the wider the diameter of your mold, the more likely it is to break. Here my plaster spilled a little bit over the edge. No big deal, I can just cut it off. So I'll break this part off. And you don't want to leave plaster pieces in your clay if you're going to reuse it because it will make it really hard to smooth it out with the lumps. So all the clay that's a little bit contaminated with hard plaster, I'll put it aside and I won't be using it for this again. So here I'll uh, try to lift the whole part. We have a bit of air in the knees. A really good tool for this would be a piece of um, string or rope um, to push underneath the clay to lift it off. So using a piece of string, if I can get it underneath the clay layer and just pull, see it releases really cleanly. And then from this side, we can unpeel the mold. So again, all the pieces of clay with plaster in it. I'll make sure they don't go back into the pile so they don't contaminate the rest. It's nice and warm on the side. So I try to find a loose edge. Let's see a very satisfying reveal. So that was the olive branch. It's funny, the clay on the edge of the olives themselves is a different color. So I think it was a bit too wet for my plaster layer. But I'll let this dry and then we'll see what it looks like in the end. The leaves turned out really beautiful. Uh, again, this one has a bit of a an edge, like a slope on the edge, so it's really easy to release. And then I'll let it cure completely, harden completely, and then give it a good uh, finishing on this on the edges. And this gray part you see here, if I brush against it with my finger, it's a layer of really thin clay that we can wash off in the end, so it doesn't um, dirty the background color. So I'll let these dry completely. I'll show you the final result when they're completely finished. And I'm curious to see what you do with the technique. So show us your results. Tag us on your uh, Instagram pictures. And um, I hope whoever receives it, or if it's for your own house, uh, is really happy with it. Have fun!